Hi, this is Cousin Russ. Uh, joining me on a office hours is Stephanie, and she'll be in the background asking questions as we go. But she caused this whole hangout to, to be recorded. And her question was, how is this, and I'll tell you what this is, better than a separate research log? And what I'm going to be talking about is uh, how I handle research logs and hopefully it'll help you a little bit. I'm going to start with Family Tree Maker and the planned workspace. And I've talked about this in other blog posts about the planned workspace and how I use it. But uh, for this conversation, I wanted to uh, just spend a couple of minutes really focusing on the planned workspace. Now, as I scroll down and let me zoom in, a little bit to make maybe make it easier to for you to see what I want to talk about. Down the left hand side, you'll see some green and you'll see some red. And this is the priority. This is the high priority. And uh, the way I use the priority system is simple. Simple for me, anyhow. That is, a any notes about this file are high priority. They're not associated with any person. It is a general category called file for the entire file. And I have them in categories, which I'll talk about at a different time, but the high priority is about the file in general. The medium priority, which are the green icon down the left, are about people. And down at the bottom, and you see I have a 283 to-do items or task list, and down at the bottom, low priority, are stuff that I've already done. So I've already done the low priority stuff, and it's the high priority about the notes. The medium is where I do all the work. Now, <clears throat> this column called categories, I could, I'm going to click on this icon for filter and all the, this is the list of tasks or categories of tasks that I have. And and I, I'm going to, I can clear them all so you can see them a little bit better maybe, but I'm going to be focusing on the FTM hints uh, to-do list just for grins and giggles and for the purpose of what we're going to be talking about. So these are all the hints that I have uh, from Family Tree Maker that I have w been working on. And just a tip, you can sort by clicking on this item at the top, like all, I just sorted the task description. So the, I have a way of, and I'll give you an example of this in a few minutes, of how I write the task and who it's for. If I want to sort by a person, I just click on that task for, and it's now sorted by person or by, by category, but I've only so I've already selected one category and that's the uh, FTM hints, but I normally keep it sorted by task descriptions. Now I'm going to uh, start by going to how I work with hints. The first thing I want to do is go to my online tree and I'm clicking on that link. Now let me bring up the screen that has the tree on it. So now you can see the tree. And I've got a whole bunch of uh, links that are a uh, lo whole lot of hints that are on the various people. And I'm going to if I click on the, the leaf, it'll show me that there's four hints for this gentleman. I'm not going to do anything on the hints. I just want to say uh, that there are hints in the online tree and there are hints in uh, Family Tree Maker, which is what I'm going to work off of. Now, I'm now going to go to the People Workspace and I see the same kinds of hints here. The hint that I showed you in the online tree is from this gentleman. Uh, but I'm going to talk about Mark here for a few minutes. Now, I'm just hovering over that shaky leaf. 
it's not shaking here, but it's a shaky leaf anyhow. Then it says that I have four hints. Now let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. You see that I have four hints for him. Now, if I want to see what the hints are, I can just click on that link. I'm not gonna go into that, but there are four hints. I also can see the four hints if I click in the upper right hand, all I'm doing is hovering over the shaky leaf that's on in the upper right hand corner and it says it has four source records. Uh, so that just tells me that he has four hints that are ready for me to work. Now I'm going to go to his person page and you'll see that down at the bottom in the task list I have and I would record it if this was the first time that there are four FTM hints in the hints category. And to get into that list, I just click on edit so I can put it in the right check mark. And I only keep one check because that I, I need to be simple like that. So the, that task list on the plan workspace works the way I want it to. So it says that there's four hints and I just showed you where I saw that. So basically, this is my work plan. I know that I've got four hints to work off of. Again, this Hangout, I'm not going to talk about how I work the hint, but what do I do with the hints when I'm done? Now, I'm going to click on, I want to get to my research log, which is really the question that Stephanie asked. And there is my notes, or uh, we would know that as research log. It is lo locked so that. Russ? Yeah, yes. Can you change your screen resolution? It's You can't see that. It's the All screen. right. Yeah, that's right. I zoomed out. Let me zoom in and move the camera so you can see it. Thank you for asking. Is that any better? Yes. Okay. So that is my research log. Now, you notice that there's not a lot of detail, but it tells me on uh, uh, February 9th, I found a record or I entered data for him from Find a Grave. Now, that's all I need to record from here because what I'm going to do is show you if I wanted more detail about that, I can find a Find a Grave record right here on the right hand side and that is from find a grave and now let me zoom in so you can see that and move the camera so you can see it there is the find a grave citation so that is the citation that i recorded uh on the 9th of february now, if I were to hover over it, you'll see that there's a pop-up window that said the record was for Samuel Worthington. Samuel is his father. So this is not a hint, which is why there's no task list that says a hint for find a grave. But I will on Samuel, if I go to Samuel, I'll find a hint. So this data I got from somebody else's hint, but I recorded it. So uh, from Find a Grave, and if I want more detail about that Find a Grave research log entry, I look for the citation, which will be on the right-hand side. Uh, does that make sense? Do you have any questions, Stephanie, so far? No, that looks that looks good. So all uh, the, since the research log <coughs> is uh, basically for my use, I, I, and it's locked, by the way, if you look in the, let me move the camera so you can see it. You'll see that right here, let me see if I, why don't I just circle it? I uh, can't, anyhow. So right here, it is locked, so only I can see it. It's a private entry for me. I only see it in Family Tree Maker 2014. It is not, you cannot see my research log in the online tree. So it's for my information, for my work, but you can see the activities and the records that I have found. 
Some are from his hints and some are not. Like that first one was not from a hint that I got for him. But when I do follow a hint and I take a hint, like I like there's the, uh, let me open it up so you can see it. That is a hint that I got for Mark for the 1920 census. And I have done it. There's a check mark on the right hand side. It's got that blue downward icon, so it's low priority. So I've already done it. I got one from a city directory. I got one from Social Security applications and claims record. But there's four um, family tree maker hints that I have to work from. And by the way, the hint is right there. I can see it in the upper. No, you can't see that. Let me. Uh, Zoom, zoom back out so you can see. I just, the hint is right there so I can get, a, I have immediate access to the hint, but I have to manually enter it down here. Now, when uh, the last hint that I followed, this number right here would have been five. I just decreased it to four when I added the entry of one FTM hint, and it was a census or census directory. The one other thing that I have for this guy, why I brought it up, uh, Stephanie and I were talking about how do we, uh, if, if I'm not looking at an image, uh, but I have a record that indicates a family history library microfilm number on family search, I will create a to-do list for that gives me the microfilm number so I can go to family search and I have a category called family search. I know that when I have time to look at family search for microfilm numbers, I will know the microfilm numbers and I can get to the person. Uh, and I'll drop back to that here in a second. But if I have a citation that's pointing to a microfilm number, I'm seeing a, an index or a derivative and I want to see the actual image and it's from family search. I have a category for family search. Now, why that's important to me that I can come in here to my task list on the plan workspace and I have a category for family search. And this is all the, uh, I forgot to uncheck the FTM hints because I have too many there. So this is just the family search to do items. So I have uh, 11 microfilm to look on family search and I have the record number, the film number, and I have the person who I'm researching. And then I would work that as I would work all of my um, uh, records. Now, Stephanie's question was, why is it, do I keep a separate uh, li uh, research log? And my answer is no. And here's why. If my computer were to crash, I have everything that I, all of my research for this particular tree within Family Tree Maker, so I don't have to worry about, well, did I put that information in Excel? Did I put it in Microsoft Word? No, everything is in one place. I, if, I, if my computer crashes, I've already backed up my file several times a day. All I have to do is restore it and I'm back in business and I have my research log and uh, and my to-do list all in one place uh, to go forward. Does that uh, answer your question, Stephanie? It does. Uh, one thing else I wanted you to uh, briefly cover is this also can help you rule out information that's not that you've looked at that that is not a match so you can so it you have a log of things you've looked at that maybe maybe it was a hint that wasn't really for that person but oh, you can good. document that good let, I'm, let, I'm, i i know we talked about that and i just it was one of those things that uh that i forgot now let me uh go down here for an example this was a FTM hint that was from the Millennium file on Ancestry. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. Maybe you can see it a little bit better and move the screen over. You see there's a whole series here that came from a record group that I really don't care about. I don't spend my time 
on this record group. So within Family Tree Maker, I have the ability to ignore that hint. I don't want to forget that, but, but that file group, right, that record group right now to me is not on my priority. I want it off of my to do, off of my hint list, because I want my hint list to be what I really need to be looking at. So I will ignore a hint, but I will record the fact that I ignored it in my research log. And I think that gets at what you, you, you notice as I go through, uh, here's the Cincinnati city directory that I was ignored, that I ignored and a reason that wasn't him. So this was not a good record. I ignored it. I know it wasn't him, but I, I made a note that I ignored it. There was a hit there. There's a birth record, there's a death record that were not for the person. So that's like the negative research that you might come up with, or I searched for somebody and didn't find it. Uh, that's where I would happen. Now, I, I had a couple of hints that disappeared, and I looked at that to see why the hints disappeared. The number was 10, and it dropped to 9. Why? Well, as it turned out, I the hint came from somebody else's record. So that's why I record who the hint came from. And then I can pretty much determine why the hint disappeared because the hint count went down one because that person was in the family on a census record for somebody else. I always work, I work my census records based on head of household. I might find a hint for someone in that household. I go to the site, I go to the hint in the web search workspace. And if I go right here, there's some census records. Now, if I were to click on here, I would see that he, I, I, I will do that. I will see that he in fact is the house head of household so that hint is for him as the head of household i will use this record to do my work if the hint came from one of the children or his wife i will go to the head of household the way i chose to handle census records is based on head of household so the hint may have come from his wife but I also will find a hint for him, and I will work the hint from uh, from him. Does that help or confuse you? No, that helps. Okay. Sense. All right. Well, if you if you have any more questions, uh, please ask. If you're in the community and you watch it afterwards, and you have uh, some questions, uh, please leave comments. Uh, this will be. Uh, posted on my blog shortly. Um, it'll be in the Google Plus community momentarily as soon as I end the uh, broadcast. And Stephanie, thank you so much for your question. It was a great question. I've been meaning to do this for some time, but didn't have a good excuse. Or, But I had time today and you were available. So that was great. And I appreciate your question. Oh, last, thank you. Last question. You're good? I'm good. Excellent. Thank okay. You. Well, thank you for being with me and spending this few minutes. And I, I really do appreciate your question. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.